Well, I was, uh, of course, a, um, a classical piano player from uh, from a very early age. Um, but I guess by the time I got to college, and even a little bit before, I was playing in uh, a traditional jazz band, a, a big band, a bassy, Ellington, 16-piece uh, band, and various rock bands, mostly sort of blues-inspired uh, early rock and roll in, in those days. Because I've been doing it since I was two, three years old, it was uh, what I was. It, it, music was uh, my life for, for, for a long, long time. Obviously not as a profession or, you know, some, something long term, but it was, it was always there. So actually I never really thought about it as a, um, as a profession. Of course, you know, to please my parents uh, from school, I, I went to art school as, as many musicians did back, back then. Um, to actually learn something, uh, learn a trade, as, uh, as as my mother would say, but that really didn't work out very well. Um, I think I lasted two years um, tops at art school and was brought in um, by the, the the head of the art school, and uh, he gave me an ultimatum: music or being at college. And I left immediately. I think I think they threw me out. Actually, the Leicester College of Art was not exactly what uh, what I wanted to do. Uh, almost the first band that I joined was uh, actually a sort of a in uh, back in those days a, a show band, a lucrative gig. For me back then, and um, yes, immediately went to uh, to Europe and especially to Germany to do that uh, to do that circuit, playing for the uh, really the American troops in session in Germany, and that was the beginning of it all. Really, early uh, early 60s, playing American uh, R&B blues music. I just remember being extremely broke, constantly. Not that, not that we really thought about money back then. It was not a, not really a priority. But I do remember living on, uh, on um, uh, bratwurst and hot dogs, sold a outside the club, and and probably little else. And I remember in in Paris, my uh, uh, the first time I was there. Uh, we literally had no money, but we found a, a, a bar that served um, bread and escargot, um, and uh, you know, beer for fifty cents, and that was our survival. Yeah, that was uh, that was the beginning of everything, uh, really. And um, I played with a with a couple of bands. Uh, one of the guys from uh, from the Small Faces, uh, Jimmy Winston's band, and uh, a, a couple of really early bands. Um, a, a really early sort of uh, uh, Pink Floyd type band appropriately or not appropriately named Yellow Passion Loaf, which was, uh, I'm, not, I'm not even sure it was a pretty, uh, you know, good name for even those days, but but we played the Roundhouse and uh, and actually we uh, we played gigs with Pink Floyd very early, uh, very early on. So yeah, that, that was the beginning of it all until we were all um, meeting up at, at, at the uh, Marquee Club at, in Water Street, which is, which was the genesis of, uh, of Yes, how it all began. 
they existed then, and we um, we actually met at a um, a drinking club next to the marquee called the Chass Club, and uh, you know every everyone kind of hung out there. Keith Emerson was there. He had the nice, of course. And uh, I, m I met John and Chris and Peter Banks there. I think M Mabel Grier's tour shop was uh, in existence, uh, but they were thinking of doing something new. But that was the, the really the beginning of Yes. Famously, Peter was the one who, who thought of the name Yes. And it stuck, and we went out on the road. We, doing gigs and it became yes. Of course we had uh, practically no original uh, music at that time. We were uh, famously doing other people's tracks in a slightly uh, different way. We'd done the, the two previous albums and Really, it was a matter of uh, rehearsing them and going into a studio, playing them live, and that was it. Um, of course, an orchestra was added uh, in Time and a Word, and uh, I think that uh, it, it was probably John's idea where we sat around and developed an album. Um, and I, and I think, you know, being in the country was probably, which other bands were doing too, was probably, a, you know, a, a way to be able to do that, you know, so the, there were no constrictions of, uh, of what had happened previously in, you know, no time to do anything. We wanted to, uh, and uh, I do remember driving around, uh, I was a driver uh, with Steve, uh, with his guitar out of the car window, uh, playing what became, uh, you know, the stuff on uh, on, on the S album, "See No Good People," "Yours Is No Disgrace," "Starship Trooper." A lot of that came from uh, Steve busking in the, in the car. There were times when we uh, where we set up uh, and yeah played outside. Uh, of course, it was a, a great environment to uh, to create, and I think probably you know one of the reasons that the Yes album you know turned out the way it did was that environment. You know, I think in, in retrospect, you know, and uh, has time has gone on, that those three early albums became more respected as, uh, you know, a, a musical entity. The beginning is always exciting, but not necess necessarily appreciated at the, at the beginning, you know, and, and of course the band wanted to progress fast. Um, you know, so that period ended for me and they went on to do, you know, other things. I was not a big fan at, at the beginning, probably was one of the, uh, you know, the problems that, uh, that I had with, uh, with, the, with the band in the, in the early 70s, just before I left, uh, was that I, I was not embracing, uh, the, you know, the new technology. Basically, the um, the Mellotron and the Mini Moog, um, they were not exactly, to my ears, uh, um, you know, my my favorite sounds. I had become a big fan uh, of of the Hammond organ, and uh, to me, that uh, of course with the piano too, the you know the organic sound of those instruments were pleasing to me. Of course, the, the Hammond had existed, and I was a, uh, yeah, a big fan of um, Jimmy Smith and Jimmy McGriff and the, that 
blues from from church Hammond to uh, blues jazz Hammond. Um, but of course, we people like Keith and uh, Brian and uh, uh, John Lord and obviously, although I didn't remember that we talked about it that much, wanted to take it uh, uh, much further as a as an instrument, or especially as a lead instrument in in, in, a, in a band. You know, my, my original inspiration was a, was a um, a guy called Graham Bond. He had a, a band called the, the Graham Bond Organization with uh, Ginger Baker and Jack Bruce. He was the one who first started cranking up the uh, the sound of the of the hammer, and then of course you know Keith took it to uh, to the extreme, and and then it became uh, you know a rock and roll instrument. Actually, rehearsing with those analog uh, keyboards, uh, and uh, you know, MIDI had just been innovated, and it, it did actually become a way of uh, reproducing the album, uh, which was 90125 at that time, on stage. It completely changed everything. Samples. You know, but basically, I, I was still playing a Hammond and a piano. Um, but we, you know, we had simu uh, the emulator doing samples and uh, and various analog synths that were mitted to create the sound that we created in the studio. So it was necessary to embrace it. Of course, Trevor and I lived very close to each other, so um, I, I was actually the, uh, with him the whole time that he was conceiving and doing that album. It was very much a, um, a labor, of, labor of love for, for him, and, and of, of course the first digital uh, album, digital recorded on digital performer, so that was uh, quite innovative and he embraced that technology and it was fun watching that. The, yeah, the possibilities are endless, but of course the, the creative possibilities are also endless. Um, you gotta put the two things together to at least end the process. Well, you know, it's been a, it's been an absolute joy, really, uh, because I, I had been um, retired f for for some years. Billy joining the band when, you know, sadly Chris uh, passed away uh, was an inspiration, really, because we had uh, we had for six years uh, had our own band together, Circa, yeah, and um, I was very happy that, uh, you know, uh, Billy was able to take over from, uh, from Chris, there was, there's probably no one else that could do it, and I watched from afar, uh, of really what was, what was happening to, uh, to this band, I've always been a fan of Steve's, the originator, you know, what, um, and even though I, I, I love what Trevor ha has accomplished, you know, Steve was there from the beginning and uh, uh, it was important to see where Yes went to. The way that I see this band uh, now, um, I, I think there's a good chance of, of it being the same band for quite some time. Um, John, the, the singer, is uh, so talented, um, and of course Jeff, certainly one of my uh, 
inspirations. Um, and the band is just sounding so positive and, and they're playing so well right now that uh, it, it is indeed a, uh, you know, a, a pleasure to be, to be able to play even the, the small part that I'm playing uh, with them. It's, it's fun.